The Astros go to Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, and they beat the Nationals. Road teams win. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Talking Baseball. We are through three games of the World Series of Major League Baseball, and we have a series. It could have went up three to nothing, and it would have been a bit of a bummer, but it's two to one, and now anything can happen. The Astros come away with the victory like I thought they would. Annie Ball versus Granky was kind of what we expected it to be in a way, I think. This episode's brought to you by our most recent Patreon supporters, Derek Stevens. Steven Derricks. The odds of that are insane. Yeah. B. Meeker. Hunter Hawkins. Wow. Sounds like a Stranger Things thing. Hawkins Lab, Hunters in the Woods. Wow. Season four. I think it might be that. Chance Broussard, Aaron Abling, Benjamin Reed, David Filipich. That's cool. Jeremy R. Lemrond, Nelson Escobar, Nate Buchholz, 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 Uni Kim, and Mitch Marg. Those are most recent Patreon supporters. Patreon.com slash John Boy Media. Thank you very much. You can watch live with us. You can win a jersey each month and some other stuff. My name's John Boy, blah, blah, blah. Jake, how you doing? I'm good. I'm getting... Uh, I've never been a news guy. Yeah. And, you know, when they played the World Series, they played on the main channel, so uh, the local news came on after... The leading story is man creeps out neighborhood with the with the drone. And it's just a reporter standing there with the drone talking about how this guy creeped out his neighborhood. And the problem is the guy that's flying the drone. Hella creepy. Crazy creepy. Yeah. So Um, it's more like he's just creepy. Yeah, so the neighbors were looking for something, and the day he got a drone, they were like, okay, we got to be able to do something with this. Um, <laughs> let's Finally, we get our chance to look into this guy's life. Let's band together on this one. So that's what's going on uh, in literally the Denver News. It, they led with that. Jeez. But I'm doing well, man, and I, I am excited. You and I... Uh, I crashed at, at a our- drone onto my neighbor's house once. At our core, we are baseball fans, and we did. We wanted this to either be full out shit pumping or a series. It's essentially a full blown series. We're going to get at least a game five, and the best pitcher in baseball this year will be pitching for Houston in that game five. And then if if they can bring it back to Houston, it'd be Verlander. So I'm excited. It's a good series. This game, you're right. Like if you had to. If you had to gun to your head, guess a game script coming into this game, you'd be like, okay, you know, Grinky locks in pretty good. Houston gets a couple hits against Danny Ball, and and it rides out from there, and that's that's what it was. Do you know the way to San Jose? A calf. West. No, I was going to say something else, but I forgot, so I went with that. Okay. What did you say before the that last thing you said? Oh, um, <laughs> I don't know. Potential game script. Uh, oh. We were rooting for oh, this. Oh, yes. I don't know. There's a game five. What you said is there's going to be a game five. Yeah. How excited are you that that means there's gonna, we're going to get the sports equinox? The speakwinox. Speakwinox. Are you excited about that? No. It's very rare, Jake. No. For anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's when all four major American sports will be played on the same day. Very rare. Football Sunday, you got an MLB game, you got the NBA, and you got an NHL. All in, all playing official games that matter. Very rare. If the, yeah. if the uh, Astros got swept, we wouldn't have got it. <gasps> oh, my God. I got to turn off the fucking news, dude. On my news, there's a late guy that just pushed a woman into a train. They just show that on the fucking news? Dude, the news is fucked up. 
Update. Don't watch the news. Listen to podcasts. <laughs> I was just sitting here talking to you about the Sports Equinox, a fun sporting event. And on my TV, it was like a lunatic in the subway station who pushed a woman into a train. Come on. Get out of here with that. You sure it wasn't a commercial for that new movie coming out with the old people that are still doing stuff? Have you seen that? The Good no. Liar? No. It was news. It was a crazy guy. Okay. Well, go see The Good Liar in McClellan. Oh, he's great. Anyways... What are we talking about? How excited you are for the sports equinox? You probably you can finally get lay that parlay one game from each major sport. Yeah, that actually is kind of fun for for the gamblers. Uh, no, man, I was I was getting worked the first five innings just watching a, an incredible Knicks comeback with the World Series. Never mind if you throw football and hockey on top of it. Um, Fine, you want to yeah, hear, you hear my behind the scenes? I had a big battle. With Snyder pretzels, you know, those okay. Snyder pretzel bits that are like this one's honey mustard and, and onion. They are the most addicting thing in the world. So I kept them in the other room. I just kept walking back and forth saying this is my last yeah. handful. This is my last handful. This is my last handful. Yeah. Until good literally cardio. In, <laughs> good cardio. Literally until we started doing this podcast, I was going back and forth. I guess we have to talk about the game eventually. This was a long-ass sure. game, National League game. A lot of substitutions, a lot of pen usage, right? How many pitchers pitched in this game? At least three. Five on both sides? No, five and six. Eleven pitchers got into this game. And, and Jim, we saw, I mean, in the Yankees series and, and some of these other games we've seen, I mean, the teams doing bullpen days, even some of the wild card games, uh, we've seen more pitchers used, and I think they were shorter games, but this one just had long at-bats. It felt yeah. like every at-bat they'd go 0-2, <laughs> nibble for three pitches, and then it's like, here's a 3-2 pitch. Every pitch felt like uh, a judge at-bat. Besides Rendon, he was swinging first pitch, but the Astros had really Rendon. good at-bats. He's trying to speed things up. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Let's burn it. Let's listen to your burn, and then we'll get into things and the talking points and the gameplay and all that. You excited? You got a burn? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, a word from a sponsor or two, and then Jake's burn. All right, Jake. Lay it on us. One, two, three. Burn. Game three in the nation's capital is Anibal the Animal Sanchez and the Nats try to go up three games to none against Houston, who hoped Zach could be their grinky to success. Top two, like when your dog gets excited. Reddick, RBI single, one nothing Strohs. Next inning, Michael Skarn Brantley raises things to threat level midnight with his RBI infield single. 2 nothing Houston after 3. But those pesky Nats, Victor goes Oladipo as Robles hits an RBI triple one-run game until retweet. RBI single by Brantley. And then Robinson Chirinos, Robinson Chirinos, says let's do something fun on this bachelorette party. So he takes a pole dancing class. One run home run off the pole. Granky was solid. The pen was better. Astronauts. Take game three to make it a two-one series. Do you know? Uh, do you know? I I didn't know that the Astros was short for astronauts. I knew for a guarantee that when I said astronauts at the end of that, you were either going to tell your tale of how you found out astronauts, or be shocked that it was the astronauts. When I we were doing the pregame show, it is like it is. I'm not. We're positive that Astros is short for astronauts? Yeah, if you do all the Houston sports team, like the Houston Rockets. Whoa. Um, yeah, they're a big NASA town. And the Texans? Well, that's okay. <laughs> well, when uh, we were doing the Yankees pregame show, and I said, what should I put on the bottom line? And you said it should be none of the Astros. No one on Houston is an astronaut. Right. And I was like, whoa, that's what that is? I never yeah. pieced it together. Which makes me think, what did I think Astros meant? And I just never thought about it as anything besides a baseball player. 
if words sound good, you just accept it as a team. And like Houston Astros, you're like, yeah, sure. That was a great pot. That was a great, yeah. And I think I feel people used to link it because they had one of the more famous Astro turf fields. So I feel like people kind of connected that mentally. There was a couple like fake connections, but yeah, and NASA astronauts. Dude, blowing my mind, man. You're blowing my mind. Sorry. Ishkaba. That's a word. Okay. That sounds good. Slippery slope. <laughs> you know what cracks me up? The Philadelphia Phillies. That's one of the that's one of the most funniest what should we name the Killed it. <laughs> what should we name the sports team from Philly? Uh fucking Phillies? Okay. A lot of lazy teams out I there. I mean, imagine if it was the New York New Yorkers. <laughs> <laughs> New York Mets? You know, that that would be like the Texas Texans. Houston Texans, yeah. Yeah. Metropolitans. Yeah, okay. Enough of that, Jake. We're get, I, mean, I just saw someone tweeted at me and someone said in the chat that, like, Anibal was tipping his pitches like Glass now was, but I didn't notice that or, or anything, but I'm interested. Um, no, they, they talked about it on the broadcast. They said that Grinky might be tipping his pitches with his grunts. You can't they react said that, to a grunt fast enough. I know, but that's what they were talking about. You can't do that. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, Jake, Grinky allowed 10 base runners in four and two thirds, and they didn't push anything across. Like he was, he got out of it. They didn't get any hits with runners in scoring position, but he got out of it. It was weird. I mean, he had seven hits and three walks. He allowed ten base runners in four and two thirds. I, I mean, the difference in this game: Houston went four for ten with runners in scoring position, and the Nationals went zero oh for ten. And it's, it's kind of this sick game we play as fans, where it's like, oh. The boys can't get it done with runners in scoring position. It's a game of odds, numbers, probability, and statistics. Um, you know, you're, uh, I'm, you and I both aren't geeks. <laughs> Compliments to ourselves. We're not smart. Um, but you have to understand there's going to be nights in baseball when you go 1 for 12 with runners in scoring position. There's going to be nights where you go 6 for 8. Uh, tonight was one of those nights that they just couldn't get the hit that, that kind of got the crowd into it. And I know, as you noted, I mean, the, the Nationals' best rally uh, was Baby Shark. Yeah, Baby Shark's awesome. Well, the Nationals had a chance to win this game on an out. And I think this is the biggest talking point. But I don't know. I didn't watch any post games, and I, and I haven't talked to anyone. So it's my sure. biggest talking point. Okay. Annabelle Sanchez, you have a runner on third base. You have one out. He's the tying run in the bottom of the fourth inning. Granky's already come out. No, no, he hasn't. But Granky's at like 80 pitches. I don't know what Annabelle, Annabelle's pitch count was at. But a fly ball ties the game. Yeah. And they roll the dice and they keep uh, Sanchez out there. And he bunts out. I won't kill him for that because I think it's too hindsight 2020. But I think it's fair to say that if they did pinch it, you could not kill him for that either. You could be like, well, you got to try to get that run in. Yeah, it's it's a hindsight's 2020, right? And it, also think about what you just said about Grinky. Like, they were getting a lot of action on the bases. Yeah. So at, at this point of the game, they were like, hey, we're getting our opportunities. You know, we're, we're, we're a swing away from taking the lead and taking control of this game. If, if they knew that the bullpen was going to come in and shut them down this hard, yeah, I think they would have pinch hit there and maybe go to Tyson Ross a little earlier, who he looked pretty good. Um but, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think you can fully play that game with the, the playoffs that Anibal Sanchez has been having so far. Um, it, no, I, I don't think you can take him out there. Okay. I don't either. I wouldn't it, the, either. The because result sucks. <laughs> you, you have to have faith that your team can score another run against Granky, like we're saying, in their bullpen. And, 
your best chances of winning are with Anibal keep pitching because he's better than your bullpen if you have to go four plus innings with them. So I, I agree with you. Um, but I think there's a lot of people that will be, be saying, you know, you pinch it, get that run, and it's different. Yeah. I, I mean, there's there's a definite argument, and I think it's uh, – in hindsight, you'd you'd look you'd look right at it, but you know that if they take Anibal out, then maybe the Nationals bullpen gets rocked and they end up looking like fools. Yeah, did Granky win you over this game at all? So I I've got a weird thing going on here, um, because you'll you'll know this and the people that have been listening to talking baseball, it he cracks me up to a degree, um. You know, we saw him earlier this season. There was a crazy double play where the pitcher covered first, and Grinky looked incredible. And he's like a Gold Glover. He's won, <laughs> he's won the Silver Slugger for for a pitcher. He's this incredible baseball player. But there's and it's his personality, and you know, there's some stuff you can't joke about with it, and there's anxiety and stuff. But like, it looks like this guy loves playing baseball. But his dream is to play baseball with nobody watching. It, if if there could not be a person in the stands, no media, no anything, that's his dream world. And yeah, man, I I like him. I'm I'm not a huge fan of the grunting when you have a when you have mics that can really pick up on that. That that gets old pretty quick. But no, I like Grinky. I just think he's he's not the Zach Grinky he used to be. Was he grunting really loud tonight? Not too, too bad, but I don't think they have good grunt mics set up. <laughs> like when, when, we, when the Yankees played Grinky, it was on the trade deadline and it was a day game yeah. and the crowd was a little more empty. Yeah. And I mean, that was intense. Yeah, I posted a video of it. Just Grinky, yeah. Grinky grunts. Grinky won me over today. And I, I loved all the stuff that Soto's been doing. I love the Soto shuffle. I think it's entertainment. Right. I mean, in two at-bats, Grinky bested him with some fucking gusto and balls of his own. Yeah. So the first one that I'm talking about, he and Phil Hughes tweet mo, like Phil Hughes tweeted this out. Soto had a 3-1 count and Granky does like a very elaborate head shake like no, not throwing that. No. Can't throw that to him. Can't throw that to him. And uh it was it's like a fake shake off to make Soto think he's shaking off the fastball. Soto takes the fastball right down the middle, three one, and you can see Soto like kind of like nod, like oh okay, fuck, yeah, all right, cool, you got me. Touche, old man. Yeah, touche. And then Granky gets him out, and then later on, uh, he throws a ball. Soto does the Soto shuffle, squares him up, stares right at him, and then he comes right up and in. Doesn't hit him, but knocks him back. And I was like, okay, Granky, for a guy who like doesn't want anything, you know, cool. Speak for yourself on the mound. So Granky kind of won me over. He doesn't last long, 95 pitches. He doesn't get out of the fifth. But uh, they lost the Cole start. They lost the Verlander start. They win the Granky start. So how about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll give him credit. I mean, his last last couple starts, he's had a little bit Ben don't break. But, hey, as long as you don't break, kudos to you. Um and yeah, huge, huge out by uh, James to come in the game, um, and he got—I think that was Zimmerman in that at bat. That was a fun one in this game. But uh, yeah, man, Gr- Granky did enough, and hey, kudos to this Astros bullpen. I—I I know coming into this playoffs, especially on the American League side, and I think this is what skewed us a little bit, Jim, is that the Yankees have had a incredible bullpen. They bu- they build their team around that. That yeah. that was part of their formula. Uh Tampa Bay, they had a crazy bullpen. That's kind of part of their formula and that's been part of their formula that they'll basically go to any arm any time. Um even Oakland when they were in the wild card, they were ready to bullpen that whole game if they needed to. Houston for everything else around their bullpen is so flashy. There's so many good guys in that lineup. They have, obviously, the big guns starting pitchers. That the bullpen gets overlooked, but their bullpen is good. Um, You know, the story about the Astros' bullpen coming into this series and last series was, oh, they don't have a lefty. It's like, well, you know what? When Joe Smith's throwing like that, he's pretty good. Will Harris is earning himself a lot of money coming up this free agency. And Osuna's been really good for a while now, and he's still super young. 
Um, so they've got dudes, and James probably has the most arm talent of any of those guys, but it's just a matter of reeling it in. So they've got a talented bullpen, but it's compared to the other parts of their team, it's not as flashy. Joe Smith, and I think we said this on the pregame show, which wasn't posted to the podcast app, if you're listening on the podcast app, but we did go live on YouTube before this game. So next time we do that, I don't know, subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can check us out. I said, like, we were talking about who we liked and didn't like, and we said we were pretty much indifferent on Astros bullpen. Not that we dislike anyone, but whatever. Joe Smith is cool. <laughs> yeah. He was the one guy before the, ga- before the game. I was like, well, I like that guy. I like what he's doing. He comes in, he he's strikes out. He's got the kind of Zim- name you like. What? He's got the kind of name you like. Basic. Fundamental. Strikes out Zimmerman. Strikes out Robles. Gomes grounds out. Looked good. All right, Jake. Bregman. Another old the- guy, by the way. I don't know if a lot of people know. Joe Smith's 35, and he's been doing he's been doing it well for a while. Yeah, Career I've been saying. 298 I, ERA. I've been saying the age. Bregman goes 0 for 5. The top of the order, Springer gets two hits. Altuve gets two hits. Brantley gets Can two we, hits. We have to go back to Bregman. Intentional walk to Brantley to get to Bregman? That's what I was bringing Yo. up. Yo. Altuve got hit by the pitch and hit his shirt, and they were like, nah, I just want to hit, which I love Altuve. That was awesome. And then, uh, yeah, intentionally walking Brantley to get to Bregman, and then they just get him out. It's a tough series for Bregman. Team wins, Fernando Rodney, 42 years old. (laughs) Love Rodney. And I'm sorry. He takes the bullpen car. Yes, I saw that. Obviously, I saw that. I mean, that that is phenomenal. <laughs> that might be why he's on the Nationals. They give pitchers the option: Would you like to run out to the mound or take the bullpen car? And I'd love to see Fernando Rodney's face. I guarantee he doesn't answer with words. He just looks at the bullpen car, and they kind of are intimidated. They're like, "So the car?" And then he just walks in. If the car's not there, there's a problem. Yeah. I've got but Fernando it- Rodney never talking. I think he's kind of silly. Um, but, dude, I, I don't know. And I, I sent a, a kind of a cheeky tweet. Oh, probably God, some you sour, did? Some sour grapes from Yankee season. I saved it at the end a little bit because I, I spun it off, off on baseball. But, dude, I, I'm trying to think of any other MVP candidate that you would potentially walk someone for to get to them slumps are tough i mean i mean i don't think it takes away from his regular season mvp candidate but i get what you're saying you're not trying to diminish what he did in the regular season you're just saying but it's it's so bizarre that he's being walked they're walking to get to him yeah and i i don't want to get into a whole like stature thing or anything like that but I don't know. I think like that's part of it. Like if I, I'm trying to picture some of the old great hitters that have like recent years, I mean, Miguel Cabrera's Albert Pujols's guys like that, like even if they were in a big slump, you just don't walk the guy in front of them to get to them. And I don't know, maybe it's more so speaks to the depth of the Houston team, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think you we've seen anything really like that. Damn, dude. Bregman's having a tough series. What if they do it again and he doesn't come through again? Like, what if that's the strategy now? Before, they were pitching around him because right. Guriel and Alvarez were slumping so hard. If now they're pitching around Brantley and the people in front of him to get to him, that's like a whole <laughs> cycle of shit. <laughs> It's the old shit baseball shit cycle. <laughs> like they didn't give him anything to hit, and now they're and excited I don't know, to man. give him something. His hit. his approach seems off. I I don't know if you've listened to Smolty talk uh, during Bregman's at bats at all. And by the way, part of my Smolty dislike that I that I'm finding out is the problem is Smolty always favors the pitcher because he's a pitcher. He comes so at when, it from a pitcher's point of view. So when your team's about to rally, he always takes the pitcher side, and you're just like, come on, dude. Like, 
I, I can't do this. Um, anyways, Bregman, he's talked about his approach the whole time, and he says Bregman, until he gets two strikes, he just looks middle in. And I, I don't know enough. I haven't watched the full course of Alex Bregman's regular season at bats. But call me crazy, call me maybe, that feels like a regular season approach. If if you get a fastball you can handle that's on the outer half for strike one or strike two, maybe go with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Anibal's first at bat, he, he went four high fastballs, and and Bregman took them all, I think. Two were balls, two were strikes, 2-2 two, two count, then he drops a high off-speed pitch, that, like, floater pitch, the butterfly, and he swings and misses. And I'm like, well, they just worked all up in the count to Bregman? Like, what? Yeah. It was pretty off. Like, he wasn't, Anibal, Anibal wasn't scared to throw any of those. No. Yeah. And then that's not not to make this a rip on Bregman because he is one of the best players in the game, but fourth inning, shot down the line, uh, and he, he can't pick it, and that was... I, I I think that, that was, was my baseball tough, That was a tough shot. No, it was a tough play, but I'm telling you, I mean, what do you think, he, like, Houston fans are saying? They're probably looking at that, and they're like, regular season Bregman gets that ball, man. I don't think so. I don't think he ever gets that ball. That was a fucking rocket. Dude, how about Juan Soto bobbling that ball in left field? For, wishing he bobbled it. Well, straight missing it, but, dude, it added maybe one second. Like one Mississippi, two mi- like that's how long it added from yeah not getting it at initially to then running and getting it, and that allows Altuve to go to third, which then allows him to score on what should have been a ground out, but they bobbled that play anyway. But if he's at second, he doesn't score. It's so these the mistakes like even though that was one added second, Altuve took advantage of it, and then it's an extra run. And that ends up being the winning run in this game. And it, it, was, incre- it was incredible base running by Altuve. It was all that was on his mind. He knew he was going to round second base. Hard. And if, yeah. if he was going to round second base hard, if Soto fielded cleanly, he was going to plant his foot and turn back to the base. If Soto bobbled it, he was going to go to third. And Soto, a uh, tough break, and it shows just like it's a really sick sport. The ball just hugs the wall, which it never does. So the ball is like hiding under the padding and just rolls past Soto. So yeah, Altuve got in there easily. I thought there was a, a chance that Altuve was going to try to score for a second, uh, just because he he kept his speed going and he's a little bit of a sick pup. Um, but yeah, dude, someone found Brandon Taubman's yearbook. Did you Ooh. see this? No. Want to hear a senior quote? Brandon Thomas has been fired by the Astros for yelling at uh, a woman who he had had tiffs with prior because she stands up for domestic violence, and he didn't like that. His senior yearbook quote is, if you can't ignore an insult, top it. If you can't top it, laugh it off. And if you can't laugh it off, it's probably deserved. <laughs> like that's his <laughs> saying like uh it's just bizarre that his yearbook quote is like you deserve to be insulted if you can't find humor in the insult <laughs> what's what's the quote that i want anyone that looks at this that i grew up with for the rest of their life to remember me as Nailed it, Tobbs. Now that's how the whole world knows you. What a bizarre whatever. That's just so funny that like someone someone probably had his yearbook and was like, I wonder what his quote was. And it's like, oh my God. He's talking yeah. about how people deserve to be insulted because they And that's what he did. Okay, whatever. That guy sucks. Know what the worst part of this postseason is? What's playing that? the what would this score be if we were playing with regular season balls? Oh, why? So are you convinced they're not regular season balls now? Oh, yeah. I was convinced since the Yankees game. I just told you I needed to see more than like three games. Um, I, I mean, they're clearly different. It's yeah. It's it's almost bizarre. And yeah, I mean, this game, 
there was different points where I think it would have been like three two, and then I mean even that Turner uh, swing in the last inning, uh, I don't know if that goes out, but it it either hits the wall or goes out regular season. Um, it, it's just it's it's one of the weirdest things, and I I mean it it brings out disappointment in me in baseball because it's. I can't believe that the commissioner office would stand there and say, like, oh, we have no idea what's going on. Oh, okay, cool. I I truly don't think they know. I think it's bad that they're negligent. I think I I believe there's a chance they don't know, but I believe that's pathetic. <laughs> yeah, it's negligent that, like, they have no idea what... <laughs> it's your sport. It's the main product of the sport. But maybe this will help them get it in control the rest of the way. It's the name of the sport baseball it's the baseball that's interesting i what comes first the name of the sport or the name of the item like a basketball was named because they played with baskets and then a ball and baseball is because they played with bases and a ball so I don't think the sport's named after the ball. The ball's named after the sport. I think I I think I disagree. Well, it's called I'd ba- have to, it's I'd, called baseball. You'd have to write it they, out in words, run though, to and bases. I don't think it's what anyone wants to hear. You run to bases. So. That's an off-season episode. If hockey was named the same way, what would it be called? Ice net? No, it'd be puck something. Ice puck? No, it'd be puck first. Baseball, basketball, puck net. Or no. No, it'd, it'd be, be, be ice, ice, ice puck. puck? Yeah. yeah. It'd be ice puck. I, well, I mean, that's what I call it anyway, so I don't really see the difference. Yeah, but okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. Anything else that we need to talk about? About this game before we move on to previewing game four? Uh, we could do more Fernando Rodney. I forgot Matt Adams was on the Nationals. He's big. Um, How about Ross getting ev- two innings and not looking bad for the Nationals in a, in a losing effort? Two innings of one yeah, hit. He, he, uh, he gave up a couple that were hit pretty hard, but he, he looked good, and the, the manager said he believed in him. And, yeah, that's that's kind of the Nationals story. Uh, the, that's going to be the whole story for tomorrow, and I know we're going to get there in a second, but the Nationals didn't use any of their big bullpen guys. Um, and bullpen usage is one of the stories of this playoffs. Um, Howie Kendrick got benched for Estrubal Cabrera because Ass Crabs had good numbers versus Grinky, and he gets uh, he gets one of the bigger hits. Uh, Howie Kendrick, who Ass Crabs played for, comes in and gets a pinch hit single. So I'm sure Talking Nats could have some debates on that if they want. Uh, Trey Turner in a big at bat uh, hit a ball off his balls. What else? Yeah, that was fun. They didn't show a replay of that, so that's 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 ridiculous. Eaton remains yeah. a pesky fuck going the other way with balls. I like that. Zimmerman had his life flash before his eyes. It was very scary. I thought he was honestly hurt. I was like, oh shit. Like, what did he snap his did he like you know when you tweak your neck real fast and it hurts? Like I was like, did that yeah. happen to him? What happened? The other thing that we no, should I th- know I think he was I think he was being dramatic to try to get the crowd in it. If you look, when he gets knocked down, he's on the ground. He knocks his helmet off his head, but, like, very casually. Like, I think he was trying to spark the crowd a little bit, and then when he saw the manager and the trainer coming out, he's like, oh, I went too far. I thought he just didn't want anything by his head because he, like, thought he was going to get hit in the head, and he just needed, like, his head to breathe. Like, oh, my God, get this off me. I need to be free of things by my head. But that was funny. Reddick made a really nice play in the corner. I think the other thing we have to mention about this game, that if you're a Nationals fan listening, if you're an Astros fan listening, the ump was atrocious. Yeah. And uh, Joe Torre puts the best ump game three. I mean, for both sides. He just he wasn't calling that inside the lefties, outside, outside and down, or inside and down to lefties, outside and down to righties spot. And... It's a pretty important spot. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, bro- and you, probably one of the I mean, most thrown-to spots. An- An- Anibal, Anibal goes down 2-0 in a count that he could have been up 0-2, and that was when the Astros got some of their runs. I'm forgetting what at-bat that was. I forget, but it was when Anibal asked him, like, where yeah. is it? 
No, he said the best the best pitching line you could say is that after it, if an ump misses two pitches, you say, okay, where was that one? Yeah, yeah, it was the bo- top of the fifth inning, and it was a 1-1 one, one count, and he calls there's two strikes thrown in a row, two and one, three and one. And I'm so tired of the, well, he has to frame the pitches better. Uh, if if that's your argument, like that shouldn't matter. And that's right. an ar- that's an argument for robot umps and, a, and an electronic strike zone. If the umpire is dependent on how the catcher catches it and not where it crosses the plate, then we're in trouble here. Because like we're yeah. we're relying on a, something that we shouldn't be relying on. But yeah, that that changes yeah. that count from three one, which he eventually walked him to a strikeout. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't think almost bad. I, I didn't think he specifically favored one team, but I thought he was bad all around. So yeah, he wasn't great. I I don't know. I think the takeaway, uh, Soto Rendon got shut down for the most part. In the top three in the Astros lineup, Springer, Altuve, Brantley, um, they get on base. I mean, two for four, two for five, two for four with two walks in there. So they basically get on base at a 500 clip this game. And the Astros bullpen shoved. Yeah. Well, that brings us actually nicely into the preview because tomorrow is a bullpen day for the Astros. But first, let's take a quick break. All right, Jake. They used a lot of the bullpen, more than they probably wanted to. Like we said, Granky didn't get past the fourth inning. They do have your Kitty or Kitty or whatever as the starter tomorrow. So they've announced that. And he said, you know, we did use a lot of guys, but we're just trying to get wins. They 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 used a lot of arms, but uh, James only gets one out. Peacock only gets one out. And Peacock's going to be a good big plan for tomorrow, I believe. Um, Harris probably not really available tomorrow unless they need to. Smith is available. One point two. Though, their, so I don't know if he's going to be part their of the best main reliever. Plan. I don't know. Smith is there. Osuna's there. He he pitched the most today. Basically, is what I'm saying. Will Will Harris, but we'll see. And then I you mean, have it's a Corbin bullpen going. day. You you know you know how we did this with the Yankees, Jim. Bullpen day, you start counting backwards. I mean, they're going, okay, final three, Osuna, Osuna, Harris, Smith. And they're saying, how do we get there? And they're well, hoping to get three out of Urquidy? Yeah, he threw 45 pitches against the Yankees, 2.2 innings. So, yeah, you're trying to get three out of Urquidy. You're trying to get potentially two out of Peacock if he's right. Um James will be out there again in the wild card, and I'm. They actually did a good job. They mentioned this on the broadcast. Presley, man, you got to go out there and try to give them an inning. Um, well, yeah, I wonder if they can do it without him. I mean, they can, but I mean, it's it's cutting corners. <laughs> I mean, he's he's been bad, Jake. Yeah. In this, I mean, he played one. He had one outing in this World Series already. If he comes in, that's the Nats' chance. He's got a 1.244 OPS against this postseason and a 18.90 ERA. Like He's been rather bad. Has he pitched an inning yet? He hasn't pitched a clean inning. He hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't gotten three outs in one game yet. Yeah. And he's appeared 50- in seven games? 54.1 regular season innings to the tune of a 2-3-2 ERA. Six sport. Seven games. He hasn't gotten three outs yet in a game. So, I mean, I, I don't think – I think he's exiled. I don't know if he's going to be part of the plan. I would say they go uh, Urquidy for three, Peacock for two. That's five. You get James for one, Smith well, for one. Well, that's like their best case out of those two guys, too. Yeah, okay, so let's so let's do let's, let's give, give them four. Four innings. Okay. We give uh Jose Urquidy and Peacock four innings. You got James for one, that's five. You got Joe Smith for one, that's six. Harris for one, that's seven. Osuna for one, that's eight. So yeah, maybe you do you do need 
Either you can go Harris for two. You can go Harris and Smith for 1.1 and 1.2. There's ways for Harris, them to do it. Harris can't go two again. He could go one, but he can't go 1.2 again. Okay. Did he go 1.2 tonight? Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, they have Rondon out there, um, who I don't think they've used him when he's up. But, I mean, if you need a low-pressure fourth inning or something like that, um, and it, it kind of, I, I think what's going to be interesting tomorrow is, is kind of reverse of today. We were wondering when they were going to pull Granke, uh, through his turn in the lineup. The Astros kind of are flexible. <laughs> if, if they need to, if they need to pull the pitcher for a hitter at any time, they'll do it. Um, That's and it might be a inter- great call. They, if, I mean, it could be after like one inning and they might be like, fuck it. Hey, it's the it's the bottom of the or the top of the third inning, top of the Would second it, t- inning, top two, and they've got bases loaded, no outs. You're gonna really send the pitcher up there? I don't think so. No outs, I, I maybe would, but but one out, I think you definitely pinch yeah. it for him. And that's uh, and it's kind of the reverse. So for the Nationals, it's when's Corbin because some of these lower leverage pitchers we're talking about for Houston, that could be your best chance to score, but you're at risk of pulling Corbin too early. So that's going to be the game of chicken for Washington. Uh, Houston, yeah, that's kind of a really fun thing. I uh, my nerdy video game, I used. I, I still play out of the park baseball. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a world where I basically tried a simulation where if you were a national league team and like you only had your pitchers go two, three innings and you had a pinch hitter every time, cause you're basically you're upgrading your hitting and almost your pitching to a degree. It kind of worked. It got really tedious and I quit like I do with most things. <laughs> <laughs> I was interested. You need it's a, a you good need, theory, you need right? A deep, you need a deep bench. You need a deep bench, and you need versatile arms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who do you who do you think is going to win? I, I think the Nats will win this. A Rod had a hot take. He said, uh, Ooh. "Whoever wins tomorrow wins the World Series." That was my take before the game. You said that about this game. No, I said that about tomorrow's game. I said I wanted to say it about this game, but I said if Houston won today. Tomorrow's game is the winner. Oh, I thought you said it about today's game. No, I said I wanted I thought you to. Have, I thought you have Houston winning the World Series now. If they win tomorrow. Okay. Probably I agree with that. I don't care. I don't know. I think Nationals will win tomorrow. I don't think they lose two in a row at home. Now Corbin versus a bullpen day. A lot of stuff doesn't add up. Yeah, I don't. I hey, their bullpen day didn't add up in our head versus the Yankees, and they they went out and won. Um, uh, I mean, it's kind of getting the clutch hits, attacking early. We we've seen pretty much every playoff game uh, have a lot determined by that. And yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the pressure is on Washington because if they don't win tomorrow's game. You got Cole and Verlander waiting, and it's like a it's like a bizarro hell you just wound up in. That that would be a fun event if like you have to face those guys again, and like talk like Cole and Verlander are just fucking itching to redeem themselves, and then they I, come out and just like shut them down, like that would be kind of cool. And hey, you know the we've talked about this Houston bad guy persona, which has been multiplied by an actual bad guy. We originally were talking about Houston becoming the bad guy because if you're good for long enough, just a lot of people start to dislike your team, Golden State. Uh, and I tell you what, no, it's the ultimate bad guy move, looking like you're hurt, and then showing up for Game Five with your bad dudes again, saying, "Uh oh, we could close this out now if we want." Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Tomorrow's going to be really exciting. And the game's at uh, noon, which is crazy. What was that? Tomorrow's game. Make sure you're ready. It's at noon. Noon game. The old noon World Series game on Saturday. They decide they wanted to compete with the early college football games. Got to beat somebody. That's, ooh, wow, Dave Martinez. Oh, speaking of uh, games at 8 o'clock. Speaking of Dave Martinez... Fox making him do an interview when yeah <laughs> when he's got 
when he's got the opposing team has a runner on third with less than with no outs and a one run ball game and he's managing the game. Yeah. Fox, audible. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. No one cares about those interviews anyway. I can't believe they're still a thing. That seems like some trial and error type shit where they would have done it for two years and then realized, oh, these aren't of value. I think people like them. I think you don't like them. Do you like them? Yeah, they're talking to the manager during the game. You don't get anything from them. Uh, Sometimes you do. Most of the time you don't. But that's like any sports interview. Yeah. So like, why need to do it? I, I, when they're in between innings and they show it to you a little delayed, I, I, I don't mind that. Making them do it while the game's being played is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I guess that is fair. I, the, the delay between innings shouldn't like that's that's fine that's fine you don't need to do it while there's guys on base and you saw buck try to get out of there because because he probably was like this sucks i don't want to do this yeah yeah that was dumb don't do that anyway corbin versus hukiti and the bullpen day i got the nats winning tomorrow going up three to one are you rooting Astros just because that's more fun? I'm rooting like Astros would be more fun. I agree with that, but I just feel. Oh, like- I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think Houston, Houston winning tomorrow might be less fun. Why is that? Because I mean, you still got Cole and Verlander coming with their backs against the wall. But isn't the Astros winning tomorrow gives us a better chance of a game seven, which is the most fun? I think I disagree. So you I think, think the bad men are ready to go. Like, I, I think depending tomorrow's result, it's either Houston in six or Nats in seven. So if the Astros win, you have Nats in seven? No. So if the Nats win... I have Nats in seven. Okay. And if the Astros win, you think it's a six-game series? Yep. I think the bad men are ready to go. Wow. Interesting. Kind of have to wrap my brain around it. Saw it. Saw it live. Yeah. Trying to figure it out. out. Well, we'll guess we'll wait and see. All right. Thanks for hanging out with the guy. Thanks for, for Be Jake, a good you, game, right? Be a good game. That's what we're rooting for. Thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. We'll see you uh, Sunday morning. We'll be reviewing game four and previewing game five thanks for hanging out with us again all i'm gonna say for the rest of my life i guess